Hello guys happy halloween and welcome to this extra spooky makeup tutorial i am wearing this orange turtleneck because i decided to dress as velma dinkley from scooby doo that's the cartoon reference and this is the live action reference i saw they've changed her costume up here and there but i have decided to do an extra spooky take on velma Okay, let's cut to the chase. I am prepping my skin with this Cryolan Marley Skin Skin Protection Foam. It's meant for stressful conditions you put your skin through, or if you're using special effects makeup or harsh chemicals. And I squeezed way too much out in the first shot, but I am applying this foamy. It feels like shaving cream almost, but I'm just applying it all over my clean skin. And as you can see, it absorbs pretty easily. After I applied it, it definitely did feel a little bit tacky to the touch. I am then just touching up my eyebrows a little bit giving them a little bit of shape and filling out the places that are a bit scanty. For my base I'm not going too heavy just using these two shades from Makeup Forever they are concealers I'm applying it on this palette and then using a stippling brush just applying the concealer all over my face and then using a blending brush by Pack I am just blending it all over I'm not really focusing too much on the base guys because the main focus is going to be the special effects makeup we do on top of the base so as long as we just have like a slightly clean base to work with that's more than enough Reaching out for one of my favorite blushes by MAC and I'm just giving myself a tad bit of color because well Velma was at least quite sweet looking before she became a zombie so <laughs> let's just do that Using this MAC eyebrow pencil I am giving Velma a few freckles all over her cheeks because the cartoon version of her had freckles and I think freckles are super cute So since freckles are natural and they are not all obviously a perfect size or shape i'm just randomly placing them here and there in different different sizes and i'm trying to give it as natural a look as possible once i'm done i take this blending brush and lightly dab it all over my freckles to give it a slightly more natural look and not make it look too artificial I am obsessed with this brand of lipstick. This is the Maybelline Superstay Matting Liquid Lipstick in the shade Initiator. It's the bomb. I then picked up these super cute nerdy glasses from Amazon. They don't have any power, but I just really love the way they look. And Velma Dinkley's look is complete, guys. She looks super cute, doesn't she? But that's not what we came here to do. We came here to make her into a zombie. I start by taking this Cryolan liquid latex in the color clear. Now you do need liquid latex for this special effects makeup guys. I take this makeup palette to transfer the product and using an old sponge, I just grab some of that product and apply it on my face. Now you can really go crazy with this. It depends on how you want the look to be. I wanted the zombie to have a lot of scars, so I am creating three open wounds using the liquid latex. The latex was falling all over my skirt, so I am taking this towel. I recommend you do the same. I am then taking a tissue paper and tearing three pieces and applying it on the wet part of the liquid latex. Since we are creating three wounds, we will need three pieces of tissue. They can be any size or shape it doesn't matter you then on top of the tissue take some more liquid latex and just press it onto the tissue now the tissue will look like it's kind of tugging away from your skin that's okay just you keep pressing it and it will eventually stick and stay i'm doing the same thing for the other two tissue pieces i have stuck on my face just take the liquid latex and press it over the tissue paper The liquid latex has to dry guys between every application. I noticed a little bit of the tissue was coming out so I'm using this makeup scalpel and just pressing it back in, but it has to dry. Do not rush it. Once my first layer has dried, I am taking some more liquid latex and applying it over the dry wound. We then apply the tissue paper on top of the wet liquid latex. I think you guys now get a hang of what I'm doing. So it's liquid latex, tissue paper, and then liquid latex again on top of it, and then you wait for it to dry. 
you can keep repeating these steps and creating more layers but i felt two layers was more than enough for me on top of the dry latex i am now applying this maybelline liquid foundation now i know this is not exactly my shade it has become a bit too dark for me now but it's okay i really wasn't stressing too much about it because we are adding so much more drama the point was that the liquid latex and the fake skin we've created should just somewhat merge with the rest of our skin tone I'm just reaching for a little bit more foundation to cover up a little bit of that liquid latex that is seen and peeping through. Now to set all of that in place, I'm using the Makeup Forever HD loose powder just on top of it so that you know all that foundation sticks to that fake skin we've created. Using a fluffy powder brush, I'm just wiping off all the excess powder. Now comes the part where we actually create the wound and I'm just pulling on that liquid latex to make sure it's not sticking to my face. Now I'm using a blunt pair of scissors and very carefully, I can't stress on this enough, extremely carefully just create a small little hole on that fake skin. I then slowly pulled that latex away from my face and snipped off the balance. This way I create that open wound effect and I can't again stress enough on how slow and careful you need to be while doing this step. Do not be in a hurry. Now even in the other wound you can see I'm first just tugging that latex creating that cavity between my face and the latex and pulling it away and slowly snipping the skin. Once I can feel that gap between the latex and my actual skin, I slowly and extremely carefully make a hole and make that tear. I kind of wanted it to have like that exposed flesh look, so I am trimming off any excess latex and doing the same step in the third wound as well. In fact, you can see I am even using that scalpel, pulling that latex away from my skin you can see I've created that gap between my actual skin and the fake skin and once I can feel that gap I go in with the scissors and snip away for the sake of the video I have sped things up but you please do not be in a hurry guys while doing this take your time this took me a lot of time to do but just take your time and do it slowly and patiently Using this Cryolan color wheel, I am taking the shade red and applying some of that red color in the inner part of the wound to create that exposed flesh look. I wanted the wound to be a little bit more open so I am trimming out some more latex and just coloring it in with the red color. I then put some of that same red in the outer part of the wound to create a more realistic finish. I then reach for the blue in the color wheel and apply it in the inner part of the wound where I had applied the red. What this does is it creates more depth and dimension and gives a more realistic finish. I then mix red and blue to create a deep maroon and this just adds another color to the wound. Using an eyeshadow brush, I grab this dark maroon eyeshadow color and apply it on the outer and inner part of the wound. This just creates that really distressed skin finish. I wanted just a tad bit more red in my wound, so I took some from that same color wheel and I applied it. I then take these two shades of pink and using a separate fluffy brush, apply it in my under eye area. I apply the same shades in my eyelids as well and then reaching for that same dark maroon, I apply it in my under eye area as well. Now I'm again going back to the same pink shades and applying it all around the wounds and here and there all over my face to really give that very infected skin look like you know the virus is kind of spreading all over <laughs> and like I said there's no hard and fast rule for these kind of things because you can just have fun with it. I'm just putting it haphazardly here and there to really create that very distressed, infected zombie look. I then use this MAC lip liner in the shade Plum to create veins all over my face. Now I'm just very unevenly applying pressure and drawing the veins because it definitely adds that extra look to the zombie. And as you can see, I'm just unevenly applying the pressure and just drawing veins in different different directions. Take us to your grave. 
once i've drawn the veins i gently take a contour brush and just press it into the skin to create that within the skin kind of effect now time for the fun part guys i took this blood gel and using the makeup scalpel as an applicator i'm just scooping some and putting it all over the inside of my wound it's very gel like and thick in consistency but that's nice because it creates that very coagulated thick blood kind of look definitely adds an extra dimension to the entire look i'm also just applying some all over the exterior of the wound uh, to look like as if the blood is spilling out once i'm satisfied with the amount of blood gel i've applied i take a towel because it's time for some stage blood and this is far more liquid in form so using this textured sponge i just apply the blood and just kind of go crazy with it because this look is all about that it's about how much you want less or more and it actually smells really nice and it even tasted like cherries i think it's meant for kids i'm not sure but um it was really nice i'm even linking it down below i picked this up on amazon along with the blood gel so as you can see it creates a really nice you know like splattered effect and that's the final look guys this is the second time i'm playing around with special effects makeup and i really enjoy it it requires a little bit of practice but with the right tools you definitely will be able to spook people out this halloween i hope you enjoyed it